Hello, and welcome to the Fresno Art Museum. My name's Katie, and I'm an art instructor here. Today, I'm going to show you one of our new exhibitions that's in our contemporary gallery. It is called Growing an Artist, the Story of a Landscaper and His Son. Now, all the art in this exhibition is from the book, and it was written and illustrated by John Para. Now, this is one of the more personal works for John Para, who is an artist who lives in Queens, New York, and has um, is an award-winning illustrator. He's even designed posted stamps. But the reason why this work is more personal is because it tells the story of his father and John Para himself when he was when he was young and was a child. Now, when he was around your age, he lived on the central coast of California, which is only a few hours away from here. And when he was around seven, starting around the age of seven, he would go with his father to work sometimes. His father was a landscape contractor, and that is someone who designs and builds and creates kind of usually outdoor spaces. They work with nature, and John Parr wanted to create a book that talked about his relationship with his father, but also about hard work, being proud of what you can do, and the connection between uh, nature, art, and creativity. Let's go take a look at some of the illustrations. Now, before we look at any actual illustrations from the book, I want to point out these two images. These images were created by John Para when he was in kindergarten. And we can see that even at a very young age, he was creating art, he was using his imagination, and he was telling stories. When we look at this, do we think that they are houses and places that he saw and he was recreating, or do we think maybe he was just using his imagination? Either could be true. Now let's look at the first illustration um, at the start of the story. So let's look at this one. This illustration is called Today is a Big Day. What does it look like is happening in this illustration? Well, to me, it looks like this illustration is actually divided into two parts. On the left, we have almost the background. There's this nice house. It's surrounded by mountains and trees. And there's a truck in the front of the house. On the right side, we have four people, two adults and two children. Now, another reason why to me it looks like this has been separated is because of the colors John Perra is using. So on the side of the house, there are lots of blues and greens, but on the side of the people, there's these pinks. Do we remember why those two are different? Well, the temperature of the color are different. Blues and greens are usually cool and pinks are usually warm. So with color, John Perra is showing us a difference between these two sides. It's almost as if he is giving us all this information to tell a story and he's breaking it apart so we can take some time to really appreciate all the details. Because that's what's great about illustrations and art is even though all of these are in a book that have words and, and tells a story, when we just look at the illustration, we can still put together a story and figure out what's happening. So. If we look back at this, I see the, what I think is the father who's in the middle of the group of people and he seems to be looking at the sun, he's pointing to the truck, and it looks like he is inviting his son to go with him. We see that the son has a little book in his arm. Now, here's a fun little difference. In this original illustration, there's no words on the book, but if you were to look in the actual Growing an Artist book, John Perra has written sketchbook on that book. So in the when we're looking through the actual book, we know that what the boy is holding is a sketchbook. 
I also, before we move on, want to talk a little bit about how John Perra created this art. So what does it look like it's made out of? He used acrylic paint and illustration board. An illustration board is just a thicker, kind of sturdier version of regular paper. If we look closely, we can see this kind of scratchy texture in the background. John Para really liked to create texture and layers. And what he did was he would pick a background color, paint the whole paper that color. He would wait for it to dry, and then he would pick another color that was different on top of it. And he would do layer on layer. And then he would take sandpaper and sand some areas of his drawing. And what happens is he takes away that top layer and bottom layers start to peek through. So even though it's pink on top, we can see some bottom layers of maybe green or blue peeking through. When he was just painting the, the mountains, the people, the landscape, he uses a lot of masking tape. What he does is he figures out what shape something needs to be, and then he puts masking tape around the, um, that object. And so when he paints it and he removes the tape, there's this nice, clear, crisp line. Can we see those nice, crisp lines in this illustration? Let's go look at another illustration. This illustration is called The Bird's Nest, and it's a little farther into the story. What is happening now? Well, it looks like our characters have moved location. We're no longer in front of that house. We're, we're seeing a new landscape, new building, new plants. There also seems to be another character who's in the back working with the father and son. He seems to be blowing leaves. But the main part of this illustration, the main focal point, seems to be the father and son and their interaction. They are interacting with this really large bush that's actually taking up the majority of the illustration. What I see is I see the father lifting up part of the bush to show his son a bird's nest with some birds in it. The son has his sketchbook open and he looks like he's about to draw the birds. Now what I really like about this image is even though the son has gone with his father to work, we've seen them, we see one of their fellow um, landscapers working, the father is pausing and he's showing his son nature, something that maybe he thinks he would find interesting. And the boy is going to sketch it which to me tells me that the father knows that the boy is really creative, loves to document the world around him, and he, ex he enjoys that and he encourages it. Let's go look at another work where it's a, a good relationship between father and son. This work is called Layout Plans. Now, what's happening in this illustration? This one looks a little different from the other ones we've looked at so far. Why is that? Well, one of the differences is they're inside. All the other illustrations have showed them outside working, but now they're indoors. Additionally, it always has been daytime so far. But now, John Parra tells us, giving us, a, giving us a clue that it's nighttime by using the dark blue and the moon that we see through this window. Even though they're indoors and it's at night, we still see them working together. They appear to be working around a table. There's a big sheet of blue paper and there's all sorts of drawing utensils. On that blue paper, it looks like almost like a map. Do we know what a blue 
paper with a map on it is called? A blueprint. And blueprints are usually used by architects and contractors, designers to build things, to plan things. Now, John Para really enjoys this illustration in the book because to him, it's showing um, how his father would often treat him as an equal and it gave him confidence as an artist. John Para's father would allow him to work on design and layouts and they would plan landscapes together. And that's what we're seeing them do here. One thing that I enjoy in this work is John Para is using colors to give us a clue that the map, the blueprint is important. What colors stand out the most when we look at this? To me, orange and blue. Do we remember what makes orange and blue special? Besides that they're different temperatures, they're also complementary colors. And that are colors that are opposite from each other on the color wheel. That means these two colors are the most contrasting to each other than any other color. And usually artists use those two colors together, complementary colors, to create some like energy and to draw attention to a certain point in an image. And so what John Parra has done is he's made the whole table orange. And so that orange surrounds the blue paper and it's giving us a kind of, it's telling us without words that this paper is important. Okay. Let's go visit one more image. So this is one of the last illustrations in the book, and it's called I Will Tell My Story. Now this is one of my favorite illustrations because it's the most different out of all of the other illustrations in the book. What do we see happening? Why? Do you agree with me that this one looks a little different? Well, one of the reasons that it looks different to me is because I have a little trouble when I first look at it at understanding exactly where the character, the boy, is. If we look at the boy, he's at the bottom of the image and he appears to be outside. He's standing on what looks like a brick path. There's some grass peeking through, there's a bird. But then he looks like he's looking up at these rectangular shapes that have drawings on them. And those rectangles remind me of what you might do with illustrations, drawings, you put them on a wall. So it looks like he's looking up at a wall. But then behind those illustrations, you see clouds and the sun and birds. This is the most surreal image in his book. That means dreamlike, kind of magical. And it's telling the story of the little boy being able to, he's using his imagination and he's using cre his creativity. He's thinking about everything that he's drawn, everything that he's experienced. In fact, if we look at the drawings on the paper, we may recognize some images. We see the father's truck. We see their other landscaper who works with them. We even see the birds um, from the bird nest. And like the title says, he, this is John Para telling his story. He wants to use his experiences, his culture, to be able to tell his story, to show how he understands the world. And he did that in this book, and he continues to do that in his artwork that he does. So now, you will most likely watch a video, um, an art assignment project after this tour where you're going to design your own garden. So uh, I know you'll all do amazing and I hope you enjoyed this tour of John Para's work and I hope if you get a chance that you'll be able to come see the work in person. There's all, as I said, all of the illustrations, there's even some sketches and blueprints in the book. So, hope to see you here. Bye.